Yes, indeed. We back again. Two week hiatus, but we back. Points and joints. Game sevens. Two of them today. We got Bucks, Celtics, and we got Suns, Mavs. Go ahead and run your plays, brother. Start it off. All right. Well, first of all, if you know Slim Daily, you know Boston, my team. So I'm a little biased today. But my picks are unbiased. So just know that. Period. Two picks I'm going to throw out are Grant Williams to get his rebounds over three and a half. He's cashed it for me like two out of three games. I bet on it. Uh, I expect uh, a lot of pressure to be on the players. This is a game seven. He's guarding Giannis, so he's going to be down there. It's just all a matter of if he can stay out of foul trouble long enough to just grab four of them things. He can go anywhere between like four and seven, so I just need him to get four. That's one a quarter. I don't think it's too hard. So I'm rocking with it. Uh, another one I like is Giannis under. I like him under seven and a half rebounds. I mean, assists. You can play it under six and a half assists if you want for the house. Uh, just because I feel like he gonna have to take over a lot more today. He might get the assists if one of his players so happens to keep getting open and he just you know finds him and is splashing. But I really think that with the game on the line and. Him possibly being able to go back to back to the finals, you know, I think you know you got you. That's when you put your chips on your superstar to go out there and show out. So I'm thinking he might go to hell off. So <laughs> didn't like his point line though, but I like his under on his assists and those are my two plays. I can dig it. I got two plays for this game as well, and I'm gonna go with for the first one, Marcus Smart over three and a half first quarter points. If you watch last game, this nigga went absolutely nuts. I think he hit like four threes in the first. But just two buckets for Marcus Smart in a winner go home game, elimination spot, role player at home. I'm just going to take it and just hope that this motherfucker is going to be efficient enough and get enough shots up to get that easy ass, you know, point line. So that's the first play. And then I'm going to go with the. Uh, I'm reversing my Grayson Allen pick. So I, I hit on his 11 points just barely because he ended with 11 points that uh, game one of this series. Mm-hmm. But I'm going to go under eight points for Grayson Allen because I think. It's going to be a lot of tough defense in this game. Um, he's a rookie, so I think he's a rookie, yeah. So he's not going to be very confident in <clears throat> in his shot or get a lot of shot shooting opportunities. They're going to be giving or distributing the ball to their main scoring options, which are Giannis and Drew Holiday right now. Um, so, yeah, I don't see him getting a lot of shot attempts, uh, let alone over, like, six points if he hit a couple threes, maybe seven if he get, like, to the free throw line or something like that. But um, Grayson Allen under eight points and uh, Marcus Smart over three and a half first quarter points is going to be my two point plays for that uh, Bucks Celtics game. And then we have a you consensus play, man. and we got a consensus play for that game to go under two oh five. Um, the line's low for a reason, and usually when it's under two ten, that's hitting at a rate about sixty percent. Um, so we're going to go with as a consensus collab play under two oh five for the team for the total for this game. And, uh, yeah, we'll go over to the Mavs and Suns game. I got a hella grip of plays for that one okay. that I like. Mm-hmm. So, Shit. Well, my plays on that one, uh, I, I wanted to keep this one light on this one. You know, the game seven, it's a, it's a lot of anomalies. So, not really too telling what's, what the hell going to happen with these bad boys. But um, the two plays that I really liked was, um, oh, yeah, I forgot. I don't know why I didn't throw this one out there. So, yeah, I got three. Um, this one's cast in for me like every game. McCall Bridges for two assists. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I don't know. He be throwing the opportunity out there. I usually be in him too early and just don't get no more. Right. I like that he gets too early. That makes me feel confident in it because, you know, he'll have all game and try to get two. So I'll usually stay away from the low numbers, but I like it. It's been hitting. Uh, I also like Jalen Brunson under five and a half boards. Uh like I said, that one, man, I'm kind of cautious on it just because, like I said, with it being the game seven, fuckers might be out there breaking up a storm. <laughs> Coaches might have to throw some early timeouts out there to settle them boys down. <laughs> I mean, you're going to be really – you're gonna we're going to see a lot of aggressiveness on both sides because these rebounds ain't going to be around for another game. So you might as well go for yeah. them now if, if you want to give your team a chance to win. So, I mean, you know, the underplay on the boards, caution it, but I like it. It's been riding for me, and I'm going to just ride them wheels till they fall off, and it might fall off today. But Period. 
under five and a half. And then I like uh, for plus money, Devin Booker under four and a half assists. But right in the last two games, they really even coming close to five. It's like one in his last game and two in one game. And yeah, Dallas I mean, don't allow I, mean, a lot. I have to think about it too. Like when I watched him play last game, the first quarter, Chris Paul don't ever fucking shoot the ball. So somebody got to shoot. It's going to have to be this nigga or Aiton. So he might get some assists to Aiton. Hopefully he fucking don't. And just go out there and try to take the hell over the game. That's what I'm expecting. So I like him under five assists for some plus money. Might even want to ride that under like six assists for like all. I can dig it. Yeah. Those your three. Mm-hmm. All right, cool, cool. Um, so what I'm running with are two Chris Paul plays, um, and then my two favorite role players from the Mavericks, which is Reggie Bullock and Finney Smith. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to go Chris Paul under 14 and a half rebounds and assists. He's only gone over this line one of the six games they've played in this series. Um, Dallas defense just swarms all over this, uh, all over Chris Paul. It's, they're going to be double teaming him. It's going to be some full court pressure. Um, and it's it seemed to affect his production overall. So Jason Kidd being a genius point guard that he is, he knows how to attack and how to set up a defense for it or to, to remove the pro- uh, productivity from a guy like Chris Paul, being that he played that position for so long, and he played for this for this Mavericks team for a minute, so I feel like his game plan is going to be to disrupt um, Chris Paul's chemistry or his flow of offense uh, with those double teams with that full court pressure, and um, his points and assists in this series so far have, have been 22, 36, 16, 12, 17, and 17, but I'm not taking the points and assists, I'm taking the rebounds and assists. Um, and like I said, he's only gone over in one of these games. I don't see him getting a lot of rebounds. Um, and he's been limited to at a maximum of eight um, of eight assists in this entire series. So I'm looking for like maybe like an eight and four or, you know, something around that range, maybe even 13 at the most, but not 15. So I'm going under 14 and a half rebounds and assists for Chris Paul. It's minus 158. So it's still pretty good value. Um, and then I'm also taking him under his first quarter points because, as you just mentioned earlier, he takes no shots in the first quarter. And I said that, too, with our last first quarter bit that we put together. But I just don't see him getting a lot of shots up, especially early. He's more of a fourth quarter, like a clutch player. He gets going after he, like, sees what kind of setups is he has to attack on offense. And I see him maybe getting his points or his scoring going in the second half if he can get around those double teams and uh, – full court pressure that I mentioned before but I like him under for both of these because the Mavericks just play elite defense against point guards um and in general they keep a lot of of teams under their 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 average team totals and that pretty much is a indicator that they play good enough defense to uh, force bad shots up or to make you pass out of shots and look for other opportunities those are my first two plays. Then I'm going, I'm running back my Reggie Billock for four boards because he just gets dumb boards. He's going to get some more tonight. Um, he just attacks the rim. And it, uh, it's crazy because you wouldn't expect that from a guard, right? There's not a lot of a guards, a lot of, a lot of guards that crash boards or crash the rim to get boards like that. But as of late, we've started to see a trend spike, you know, in the direction of the guards that get more rebounds than some of their bigs on their team it makes no sense it's an anomaly within an anomaly because they're outsized by every position on the court damn near and still end up getting over their rebound totals with the big guys out there struggling so um four rebounds for reggie bullock his house line's four and a half i teased it just a half um and got it at minus 174 so good look there and um he'll be crashing boards even though he does float around that three-point line a lot um he's aggressive and Dwight Powell gets in foul trouble it opens up opportunities for everybody else to get boards um so I'm I'm gonna take him for the four plus and then I'm gonna take uh Dorian yeah Dorian Finney-Smith I'm gonna take him under four first quarter points because we already know who's taking all the shots bro (laughs) it's not gonna be Finney Smith unless he's wide the hell open and you know Luke can get the defense to collapse He'll get a few shots up in the first, but I, I really see Luka taking over and doing his Luka thing like he did last game and getting, you know, if not close to double digits in the first quarter, then, you know, somewhere around 10 to 12 shots up in the first quarter, and that's going to be 10 to 12 possessions 
taken out of the uh, favor of Finney Smith. So I'm, I'm going to go under four points for his first quarter. And then that'll be my fourth and final play for this game. And then again, we got one more consensus play for the total on this. We're taking both games under 205 today. So we like the we like the uh, the unders because they're game sevens. So there's a lot of uh, pressure on both sides of the ball. So there's going to be a lot more second guessing, um, which takes more time off of the clock. When you're not looking for that, that first option, you're trying to set up the best shot. You're running your offense, using up that, that whole play clock. There's not going to be a lot of possessions. And without extra possessions, it's hard to hit an over. So... Under 205 is going to be our consensus play for both of these games today. Um, and the only way I see it going over is if, A, they're efficient as fuck, which we're not expecting right now, or, B, either of these games going to overtime, which could happen because they're good matchups, and that's why, why we're in a game seven in the first place. So that's pretty much it for that. Yep, and like I said, that or maybe take the first halves under on these games because I definitely think they'll start slow, so. Swing you low, people. Yep. These are consensus plays, which, again, these are not official plays, but they are plays that we're leaning on. Um, our official plays are our player props. You can take any of these plays and swing them however you want to, but this is what we like. Uh, but the recap from the last episode two weeks ago, I went perfect on props, 7-0, and, and the only thing I fucked up on was money lines. So I'm not touching no money lines today, even though I do like, as a lean, again, not official play. Suns win, Celtics win. I want to see the Celtics in the finals. Um, I feel like they've earned it this year. They've kept their squad together for the most part. Time Lord, if he ends up getting uh, activated today, he's going to make all the difference. I feel like that's the X factor for the Celtics if they can get to well, I need the get Celtics clear to today. Because uh, I had them fools coming out the East. So, they so did I. Then I'm going to bread up a good 250. So. so did I. Hopefully they win this game. <laughs> and then they, I did not foresee that bet done. So now I remember you had a little doubt about that when they bet. went down three two. So yeah, yeah <laughs> they yeah. showed you they can keep their ass on, uh, uh, in high spirits and fuck around. Yeah, and I mean, I I already bet on them long ago though. I'm saying like before this series even started, when we, when we talked on the last series. Mm -hmm. I bet on them to come out the east. So I the way my money was tied up in these niggas. It was, but your doubt has been back and forth. <laughs> But now yeah, they're gonna they're gonna dude, decide yeah. if they want to go ahead and uh, take it from the Bucks, who are just as hungry as them to get back in this finals for a back to back uh, or an attempt for a back to back championship. What I really want to see is CP3 get it, which um, it's gonna be hard to get past some words, but them playing well um, and having Clay back in the rotation, putting up eight threes in the game. So that's just my my. Predict predictions for the finals right now. I want to see Suns Celtics, but I wouldn't be surprised if the Warriors, my actual favorite team, ends up fucking going instead of the Suns. But CP3 is not going to be around too much longer than nigga 37. So if he don't get it this year, he might retire or he might retire within the next one to two seasons tops. I don't see him playing at 40. Um, I don't see him being no bench player or role player or getting picked up as a, you know what I'm saying, a, a, a veteran Hall of Famer for somebody's roster to, to kick some expertise to. I don't, I don't, I don't think Chris Paul want to go out like that. So even though I got him under today for the reason that the, the Dallas Mavericks match up well with him, I do think that he deserves at least one ring in his 15, 16-year tenor because he's been one of the best point guards the game's ever seen. So does he actually want to get it done today? We'll see. Cause it's gonna be on him. It's gonna be on Devin Booker. It's gonna be on DeAndre Ayton. Which one of which one of them three is gonna let them down for them to not win this it's game on seven? On Dallas winning, and Chris Paul will coach one day. Mark my words, people. But I'm betting on Dallas today. I think Dallas gonna get it. I don't know. I just like the intensity they play. Listen, with, man. the X factor for this game is Scott Foster. If Scott Foster is officiating this game, I officially take my pick back from the Suns. Because he's not going to let Chris Paul win. As we all know, if you follow <laughs> Scott Foster in recent in recent history, he does not like Chris Paul. He does not like James Harden. They have a combined 1-21 uh, 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 win record when this nigga is officiating their games. And he's the crew chief, which means he's the most important ref out there. So he, he has pull. Definitely has pull. But, uh, yeah, we'll see what happens. If Scott Foster's there, it's funny because I just seen a meme with him with a Mavericks jersey on. The X factor to me is going to be Maxi Cleaver. If Maxi gets these threes going, it's over for these niggas. If Maxi's hitting threes, 
I well, he'll get his things. threes if Scott Foster's in there officiating. He'll make sure <laughs> that everything swings in Dallas's favor. <laughs> just when you least expect it. Oh, yeah, that's Keep it. your eyes open. Oh, you don't want to hear it, but it's it's proven record. Your ears ain't got to like it, but it's the truth. But yeah, that's all we got today. That's 15 minutes. Recap from the last episode. Like I said, I went perfect on the picks last time. I doubt I'm going to do the same today, which is why I got a lot of kind of variation just in case something goes bad. But uh, I do got a couple of MLB picks for the later games today. And uh, I like the Phillies plus one and a half. The Dodgers are debuting a rookie pitcher today. And their line is pretty much... Uh, reflecting that so i like the plus one and a half for the phillies to keep it close they're just about three games behind the dodgers in terms of win record um they have a better starting pitcher today so i'm gonna put it on that and i'm gonna call it phillies plus one and a half minus 180 uh the guardians game has already started but i did have the guardians um on a plus money lean for their money line because i like tristan uh, tristan mckenzie he looks exactly like you but he pitches like pitches like fucking out of this world He's a dreadhead that plays for the Guardians. He's in his second, maybe third year. Um, and he's nice. And so, fuck it, I'm a bet on him. I got him getting at least five strikeouts. And then I got the Twins, the team that they're matched up with, under four and a half for their team total. So those are my MLB picks um, that I have. You got Otani getting a hit? Yeah. Cool. Minus 240. It's juice, but. This nigga came off hitting two home runs, so one hit, he can do it. Yeah, Two's I mean, the house hit. does too. They got it juiced as hell. So, and yeah. then for the NHL pick, I got one pick for the Rangers money line tonight. Um, I just like them today. It's just a, I'll see what happens because I think, I don't know, I don't know what game this is in the series, but they're at home. They play a lot better at home. They have one of the better home records in the NHL, so. That'll be my last lean for the day, and I'll call it a day. Points and joints. Points and joints. We out.